The arrival of Jesus was to save people from their unrighteousness slash sins. Remember, he is the heart of Christmas. Christmas, what's the point of this morning? It's not about sitting under a tree and someone's like, oh, that's a pagan thing and it came from pagans and we don't have a Christmas tree at home, we Christians. And we got a big Christmas tree at home because we just want to have fun. Amen? And it's got lights on it and little baubles and it looks like that. Come on, man, let's live a little. Amen? And uh, um, like the Easter bunny. The Easter bunny came from some, some pagan thing. We don't celebrate the Easter bunny. Listen, I eat chocolate. albeit dark and no sugar, but I eat the chocolate. But come on, let's have, a, let's have some fun. We're not celebrating or worshiping a bunny or a Christmas tree. Amen? We're celebrating Jesus' death and his birth. Who's with me? So, okay, anyway, I'm going to go down that road and stay where I am. I'm going to run out of time. So the world makes Christmas about so many things, but its true meaning falls squarely on God's dealing with the greatest limiting factor. Sin in any way that and sin is any way that we miss the intention God had for the world when he created it. Greed, gossip, unfaithfulness, hatred, racism, all fought short, short of the glory of God. All of us have been subject to sin's evil influence and have felt the effects of sin's rule and reign. God's heart of compassion moved him to send Jesus as the way to rescue the world. Now, I put there unrighteousness slash sins because I don't believe God now in the new covenant is so focused on sins. And that the problem in the church is we've made the sin the big thing. Sin is the big thing in the church. Actually, it's not, sin is not the big thing. Faith is the bigger thing. Amen? That's why Paul says, when I, when I focus on the, on the Holy Spirit, when I walk in step with the Holy Spirit, I do not gratify the desires of the flesh. It means I don't, walk in, I don't want to continue walking in things that are not good for me because I'm focused and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. The law, on the other hand, says if you will constant, constantly focus on your sin and try and do away with it and make sure that you clean all the time, uh, that's what the law says. The problem is we, te- we end up focusing on the very wrong thing and end up doing the wrong thing. Who's with me? So Paul tells us in the New Covenant, walk in the Spirit or walk with the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Not the other way around. Beat yourself with rods, go live on a mountain, stab yourself with stuff and then you will be holy. No, you are holy through Christ. Focus, walk with the Spirit and you will not gratify the things that seem to, seem to want to trip you up. But without Jesus having come to the earth, my friends, all of us would be lost. All of us would not have the ability to even be with God. Who's with me? So in in 2 Corinthians 5.21, Paul says this. He says, for God made him, who's him? Jesus. For God made him to become sin for us. So that in him, in him we are in Christ. Like they were placed in the ark and the ark was sealed up from from the outside by angels. We've been placed in Christ, in him. You might become, now the word might is not maybe, that's just a figure of speech, but you might become the righteousness of God. So God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, of course, on the cross, so that in him, placed inside of him, once I get born again, I might become the very righteousness of God. So Jesus comes to the earth to make us righteous so that we can have his righteousness. Who's with me?